good morning let us continue with our chapter today we'll finish with this the shoemaker so the last thing that we had read about was that the shoemaker was sitting over there right and we had two more people along with him one was Monsieur, Monsieur Defarge and the other was Mr. Lorry and the shoemaker also tells them about how he got to making shoes when he, when he was in prison he was taught over there and he also when they ask him his name he doesn't remember his name right but he remembers where he was imprisoned in 105 North Tower. So let's continue. As he held out his hand for the shoe that had been taken from him, Mr. Lorry said, still looking steadfastly in his face, steadfastly meaning gazing straight into his face. Monsieur Manet, do you remember nothing of me? Right, so we get to know that the shoemaker's name is Manet. So he says, don't you remember anything about me? The shoe dropped to the ground and he sat looking fixedly at the questioner. Right, so the shoe which was in his hand, in the shoemaker's hand, it fell to the ground and he started looking at Mr. Lorry. Monsieur Manet, Mr. Lorry laid his hand upon Defarge's arm. Do you remember nothing of this man? Look at him. Look at me. Is there no old banker, no old business, no old servant, no old time rising in your mind, Monsieur Manet? Right, so Mr. Lorry puts his hand on Defarge's arm and tells the shoemaker if he did not even recognize Defarge. Right, and then he says that don't you remember any old banker, business, servant, no old time means in the past right the the times that they had spent together in the past and he says rising in your mind he says, all these all these memories don't come back to your mind as the shoemaker sat looking fixedly by turns at mr lorry and at defarge some long obliterated marks of an actively intent intelligence <clears throat> in the middle of the forehead gradually forced themselves through the black mist that had fallen on him so the shoemaker is looking at both these men standing in front of him and gradually like very faint very few memories come back to his mind they were overclouded again they were fainter they were gone but they had been there Right, so those memories come and as fast as those memories come, at the same speed, those memories disappear. And so exactly was the expression repeated on the fair young face of her who had crept along the wall to a point where she could see him and where she now stood looking at him with hands which at first had been only raised in frightened compassion if not even to keep him off and shut out the sight of him, but which were now extending towards him, trembling with eagerness to hold his face and love it back to life and hope. So exactly was the expression repeated on her face. Right, And while the shoemaker is trying to bring back these memories, inside the room comes a third person. Now we get to know that she is they say over here a fair young face of her so obviously her means it's a, a girl who's come in right and she is also full of doubts looking at the shoemaker now all those who have read it know that this girl who has walked in is in fact the shoemaker's daughter but the shoemaker has lost his memory it's coming back gradually but most of it has been lost so even she is worried whether her father will be able to recognize her will be able to remember her darkness had fallen on him in its place he looked at the two 
less and less attentively and his eyes in gloomy abstraction sought the ground and looked out and looked about him in the old way finally with a deep sigh with a deep long sigh he remo re resumed his work now you can see over here gloomy abstraction now gloomy means sad abstraction means state of being lost in thought right so and his eyes in gloomy abstraction right so gradually again the shoemaker resumes his work and he forgets about everything have you recognized him monsieur asked defarge in a whisper yes for a moment at first i thought it's quite hopeless but i have unquestionably seen for a single moment the face that i once knew so well hush let us draw further back hush she had moved from the wall of the garret very near to the bench on which he sat right so this girl is coming closer to the shoemaker there was something awful in his unconsciousness of the figure that could have put out its hand and touched him as he stooped over his labor right so there was something awful in his unconsciousness of the figure right so that figure <clears throat> could there's something awful he says right now what awful now obviously that's his daughter over there right and his daughter is coming closer to him and if she wanted she could have touched him with her hands as well as he stooped over his labor stoop now what was his labor he was making a shoe what is stoop he was bent down and he was looking down right so if she wanted she could have reached out her hand and touched him it happened at length that he had the occasion to change the instrument in his hand for his shoemaker's knife it lay on that side of him which was not the side on which she stood he had taken it up and was stooping to work again when his eyes caught the skirt of her dress right so now the shoemaker is very engrossed in his work in gross meaning his whole concentration is in his work only of making that shoe right and he requires a knife as well so he bends to the other side to pick up the knife and while bending to pick up the knife what does he see he sees the skirt so now he knows that there is a third person in the room right and third person is a woman he raised them and saw her face so when he see the third person he looks up and he sees her face the two spectators started forward but she stayed them with a motion of her hand she had no fear of his striking at her with a knife though they had now both the men in the room mr lorry <clears throat> and mr defarge they get worried right because the shoemaker is looking at this girl and he has a knife in his hand now why they worried is because the shoemaker has lost all his memory he is a person who lives all by himself all alone and now so many people in that small little room so they get worried so they try and move forward and as soon as they take a step forward the girl with a motion of her hand tells them to remain back where they were standing he stared at her with a fearful look and after a while his lips began to form some words though no sound proceeded from them right so he kept staring at this girl over there and after a little while he tries to say a few words but there is no sound that comes out it's not audible by degrees in the pauses of his quick and labored breathing he was heard to say what is this right so finally the words that come out from the shoemaker's mouth are what is this with tears streaming down her face she put her two hands to her lips and kissed them to him
you are not the now gaulers you see it's written as gaulers over here but actually it is jailer see uh, the chief jailer we'll pronounce it as jailer so you're not the jailer's daughter she said no now, who are you right so now the old man the shoemaker thinks that she is the jailer's daughter so he says are you not the jailer's daughter and she sighed sigh meaning very sadly she says no because whose daughter was she she was his daughter who are you not yet trusting the tone of her voice she sat down on the bench beside him he recoiled but she laid her hand upon his arm recoil meaning you can see over here move body quickly away from somebody right so as soon as she sat down next to him he recoiled he moved a little further away but she laid her hand upon his arm but she you can see in the picture also one hand is on him a strange thrill struck him when she did so and visibly passed over his frame so he felt nice when this girl puts her hand on his arm he laid the knife down softly as he sat staring at her so the knife which was in his hand you can see it in the picture also he puts it down advancing his hand little by little he took it up and looked at it right so he with his hands he takes her hand and he starts looking at it in the midst of the action midst meaning in the middle of all this that was happening he went astray and with another deep sigh fell to work at his shoemaking so whatever thoughts were coming back whatever memories were coming back to him while the girl sits down at the side of him puts her hand on his arm he takes her hand in his hand what happens he went astray astray meaning his mind again was lost and with another deep sigh deep sigh meaning again sadly he fell to work at his shoe making so he forgets about who she is who those men were and he starts and continues with his shoe making so this brings us to the end of our first chapter of aster the shoemaker remember what i said if you can get the book a tale of two cities it's a classic book right these are classics these books should be read by everyone right and now you guys are in class 8 by now you should have read these books these books are normally read in class 6 and 7 so if you get these books you can if you don't want to go out you can order them also those whose parents go out for work you will get this book a tale of two cities from uh, universal otherwise there are all these uh, applications amazon kindle and all you can order them from there as well so go through these classics not only will you be reading a classic book one of the best books ever written but also it will help you to improve your english because the more you read the better your english will become so this brings us to the end of our chapter tomorrow i'll be only doing the question answers with you right so there will be no explanation work only question answers we will discuss the answers right and then you will write down the answers in your own words that we shall do tomorrow remember to write down all the meanings of all these difficult words which are over here right because before we start any chapter first all the word meanings are written after the word meanings are written only then the question answers are done so tomorrow we continue with the question answers the syllabus has been put up 
I uploaded it on the classroom app as well so you can go through it there All right so I'll catch you guys tomorrow till then be safe and finish all the writing work bye